Hello and welcome to the second part of this card wipe effect tutorial. In the first one I set up my card wipe with a whole bunch of different compositions. Now it's worth saying that you don't have to create it with a whole bunch of compositions. I could have simply created a grid layer so that I knew where my individual images went, imported the images and simply changed the size of those individual images so that they fitted inside the grid. It's just from my workflow I just felt it would be a bit quicker just to be able to duplicate the composition, know the composition is the right size so that when I move them around they'll fit very easily. But you could have just brought the images in as well and changed them and brought them into the appropriate size. Now what we've done is we've created a single layer. It had to be a single layer so that we could apply the card wipe effect and we've gone from 100% down to zero. You can see that because we've got them at three rows and four columns everything's moving together in the way that we would hope. And it is effectively a 3D animation. If you look at these, these are actually turning in 3D space. And to get a better feel for what they look like, what we can do is we can actually add something on the back. At the moment, if you see down here, it says back layer is the same as the front layer because we've only got one layer in here. So if we bring in a simple solid, so Command or Control Y to bring in a solid, and we call it BG for background, and we click OK. When we go back to the grid layer, and what I'm going to do is at the moment I'm just going to select the grid layer and I'm going to hit the little lock icon here so that we don't keep going between them. And what I need to do then is turn off the background layer so I'm not seeing it anymore and make sure I change the back layer to the BG layer. It doesn't matter where the layer is, we actually need it turned off. It'll still be picked up so that when we do our transition completion and pull it through, you can see that the back layer has come up without any problems at all. The only issue you will have is if you want to add effects to that back layer. It's not a big problem, but I'll just show you what it is. So if, say for instance, if I turn my background layer on, and I'm actually going to turn off the lock here and select that BG layer again, and I'm going to add, say, fractal noise. So I'm going to click in here and say fractal noise, frac, fractal noise, there we go, noise and grain, fractal noise, drop it on there and it's on there and we could add all sorts of other things to make it look like fire or water whatever you want I'm, it's up to you to do that but if I turn the layer off now and go back to my grid and go back to my card wipe and I actually do the transition completion you'll see that we can only see the blue layer still and this is because it's looking at a single layer which means that if you want the effects on the layer to be seen you must pre-compose that layer in other words you're baking in the effects to the layer that you've got so I need to take the background layer and either control shift C or right click pre-compose and we're calling it BG comp 1 which is fine so click OK and now that it's become pre-comp if I go back to my grid and I'm again going to lock it in place and I pull the transition completion through you'll see that it's seen whatever is on the back and that's working perfectly but actually for the majority of uses that you do this you probably want to bring in a video so I'm actually going to double click to bring in a video file so let me go and find my video file so I've now got a video file I can take that video file and drop it into my comp and again I can turn it off and turn the audio that's coming with it off and then I can go back to my grid back to the effects controls and I can change the background layer to the 3DC that I've got the movie layer so that when I do the final turn around I've got a movie layer at the back which all looks great so that's how you would generally use it and then trying to do all kinds of transitions now please note that the rows and columns are animatable and I've quite often seen this with one and one so that when you do the transition it's a single item from one to another and notice that at the moment the flip axis is X you can change the flip axis to Y so that you can have it automating on and off. You can even change whether it's positive or whether it's negative going one way or another. So as you can see you can even animate these. So you could have it flip on one way and then you could change it to flips off the other way and change the background layer or whatever you've done in the meantime. So it's highly animatable. Obviously if you've got lots of different pieces of video it can only see one background layer. So if you're going to bring in a number of different videos that change as it flips over just make sure that you bring them together and pre-compose them and then it will see it as a single layer. I'm just going to take this back to 3 and 4 3 and tab 4 enter so that we've got it back at the original settings that we had so we've got all the images before now you can see those are now changing in a different way because we're flipping in the y-axis let's go back to the x-axis 
we'll take it back to positive and at the moment it's left to right so I can pull that through and we've got left to right but notice that we've got lots of different options in the flip order so if you drop the flip order down you've got all kinds of random ways that these can happen notice top right to bottom left so if I click on that one it starts up the top right and as I start to pull through goes down to the bottom left so you can actually change the way that it will animate in you can even do that by using a gradient layer so this is what we call a compound effect the effect can be driven by another effect so if I create another layer in my composition so I do command Y control Y and I'm going to call this my gradient and I add say a ramp effect to that if you don't know where ramp is again you can type over here in the effects and presets type ramp and you'll see it's under generate ramp I can take that and drop it on it's generated the ramp but this time I'm going to change the ramp from a linear gradient to a radial gradient or radial ramp and I'm going to change these points where it starts and stops so this is the start point for the black and take it right over there in this corner I can't quite see the end point for the white so let's just click on end point for white and take that down to about there okay so we can actually animate that now if we want to so what we've got is white in this corner and black in this corner and again we don't need to see this layer but what we probably do need to do is bake in the effect because once again when we go back to the card wipe effect it's just going to look at the layer without the effect we need to bake that effect into the layer for it to be seen by card wipe so you can right click on CS6 if you don't have a right click option and pre-compose you can always go to layer pre-compose or remember the keyboard shortcut control shift C and then we can move all attributes and call this the gradient comp which is fine click OK turn it off don't need to see it again well, we can go back to our grid go back to our effects controls and now where it's got gradient layer we can drop it down and we can say OK let's look at our gradient comp what we need to do is go from flip order where it's got at the moment something that's happening from top right to bottom left and go down to where it says gradient now it will look at what's ever in the gradient layer so that when I start to pull it through it should start at the top left and go down to the bottom right so let's just pull that through and have a look and you see that that's gone down following the gradient from black to white okay so we can play around with how it actually reveals and of course when you've got multiple rows and columns because obviously these can go up to the many hundreds you get a very very different feel it's worth saying that if you do get into the hundreds say I did 300 by 400 that the whole thing starts to move a bit slowly you can see there it took a while to render out so if I just start to pull this through you can see you're going to get some very interesting effects that look amazing but it also takes quite a long time to actually render these effects but it is definitely following the gradient so you can see if I go back to say 20 percent you can see that the gradient that we had there the black is just beginning to show through so just because I'm using it with three and four doesn't mean that you can't use it with nice high numbers and get some pretty amazing feel for how it looks now one of the other things that you're seeing here is the transition width and at the moment it's set by default to 50% but you can change it to become very narrow or very wide which is pretty much going to take up the whole of the screen if we go too high so you can get a very different effect by the way these things pull through now this is more effective and you'll see it more when you're working with very high numbers like three and four hundred you're not going to see it so much when you're at three and four for instance if I go back to three tab four enter you'll see that all we're doing is getting this type of approach it's a narrow turn and you can see it's going through quite narrow it can make some difference if we turn it right down very low you'll see that as we start to pull it through it's pretty much going to just do them one at a time so that's playing with the width which is by default at 50 percent so do bear that in mind when you're playing with this 50 percent and that's how we tended to work through to start off with okay so you can have a very random turn because you've actually got randomization options down here so we've got timing randomness so if I open up timing randomness and take that all the way up to one which is its maximum setting and I start to pull that through you'll see that it's randomizing when they turn so just giving us that much more randomization 
as we actually work through the actual transition itself. So you can have it one and one, you can have it at 300, 400, 3000, 4000 if you want. It's entirely up to you how you play with these different bits and pieces. But not only can you play with them looking exactly correct like this, you also have an interesting option called card scale. And I'll show you what happens. If I start to pull down card scale, you can see that we can make the cards a lot smaller. And again, we can flip them over. It's still got our randomness quite high. Let's turn the randomness straight down and turn our width quite down. And then we can have them turning around in quite an interesting way, looking completely different because we've played with the card scale and we can take those really small if we like and of course we can animate that so they can start very small you can get huge but I don't know why you'd really want to go beyond one but you can certainly pull them down to whatever level or whatever size you want to get a different feel for each one that you're working on okay so these are some of the bits and pieces that we've been playing with in the next tutorial we're going to start looking at camera systems and lighting which is a way of moving these around in 3D space even though notice we've not hit any 3D layers here even so we do have the option because this is a true 3D compound effect my name's Andrew Davis thank you for watching mm -hmm.